All right, now in continuing, this will probably be what maybe the fourth part, or you could call it third part, after the Midrash, after the Midrash. And I recall that we began off speaking about seal and the seven seals, and we was going to explain what a seal is, and we asked the question, what is a seal? And um, we was looking for a particular document, and we didn't have the document handy, and we stepped away a couple of times um, from the camera looking for the document, and then we uh, found the document when we went on the break. And this is the document right here, National Sunday Law. Now, um, I think we made a similar reference in our um, uh, preliminary notes, in preliminary notes on seal, in describing seal. And I think it's it's important for us to touch on it, and we're going to continue also with the Webster's Dictionary. So we also look at the Webster's Dictionary. That's what we had actually left off from the Webster's Dictionary. But since we found this, we want to turn to a particular page, and this, this is the actual copy that we had read some years ago and then studied it. You know, first you read it, then you study it, get a general idea, then go into detail and start to fact check it you know, start to vet it. Now, right here, it spoke about seal in here, and it was interesting what it said about seal in this particular document. This document is interesting in a lot of ways, and a lot of the information, although it is not, how can you say, it, it's not one of those glamorous kind of a book, so I don't know if you understand what I mean. It's not glamorous in that sense, but it's very accurate. It's very accurate in a lot of its historical um, its historical uh, claims, a lot of the historical things that it points out. That really helps us to understand both how the Bible is accurate in its um, symbolic representation and the actual manifestations that have happened. The only area of this book which uh, really falls short is concerning Ethiopia, is concerning His Imperial Majesty, and that aspect as well as we as black people. But as far as um, speaking towards the general prophecy, this Sunday Law book is, is, is very, very good. I think you probably can look it up. And if we find it, we'll try to post it to our website as well as another free downloadable. But it, it, it's, a, it's a very good book, and they used to pass this one out free. You know, and we hope to get to that point too. It's on, it's on what they call newspaper print kind of paper that reduces the cost somewhat, and we need to find printers that will give us that option as well. You know, it's, it's, it's the so-called like newspaper type, not that so-called high-quality gloss paper. But be that as it may, right here it says on page 45. On page 45, it says, uh, first of all, what is God's seal? Question. A seal is something having to do with legal affairs. A law is stamped with the seal of the ruling government. A seal has three parts. One is the name of the ruler. Two is the ruler's title. And three, the territory over which he rules. Now, you can see from my actual days of uh, study I wrote in here, I was so inspired by what I heard there that I wrote in here to answer the first part first, the name of the ruler, Haile Selassie, I, or Haile Selassie first, the ruler's title, king of kings or emperor, and the territory over which he rules. I put Ethiopia and Zion right there. I put Ethiopia and Zion right there. Now, of course, he's Earth's rightful ruler, but the direct territory, we can say, from which he he rules. You understand? Because the king of kings of Ethiopia, the Davidic king, sits on Jehovah's or Yahweh's throne. So therefore, the Davidic king is by God's law and scriptural law. You understand? In other words, it's like they say, it's arguably that he is earth's rightful ruler, even from those basic facts. Whether people like it or not, you know, whether you like the dollar or not, or the system of things, that's the system of things. Right? In the world, you have to deal with it. Well, so is God's system, but God is 
much more, he says, mercy triumph above judgment. You understand? Mercy triumph above judgment. So the Almighty is showing mercy and grace in spite of both Ethiopia's apostasy and the whole global apostasy. But we know for sure that there is judgment. But in this time of grace, let us work out our salvation, as the scripture says. So it goes on to say that when the government seal is on a law, when, when the government seal is on a law or on currency, as you probably know from the so-called dollar, and we use it as a demonstration, a demonstration dollar, this is the so-called great seal. And there's a whole bunch of hoopla about that, and this is the other seal. And see, both of these seals together, that is a magical Kabbalistic principle right there. You know, so this is the so-called world almighty. This is the, the one. This is the one in the world. The world's one, or the world's God, the God of the world, right here. But you can see the seal is on this currency, just to kind of demonstrate what it's meant by the seal. You understand the U.S. seal is even on that currency. So when the government seal is on a law or on currency, it is official. That's that's what makes it. That's what makes it you could uh that's what makes it official. That's what makes it legal. The whole loyal nation stands behind it. In other words, the nation stands behind it, but it's all about loyalty because they don't stand behind it, they have broken the law and therefore is subject in jurisdiction to certain judgment. You understand? So God's seal makes his law official. God's he God's own seal also makes his law uh, 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 official or uh, that, that means it is it is it is it is active and the whole loyal universe stands behind it so god's law has his seal on it and the entire universe you understand in faith stands behind it and that which does not goes out of goes out of or taken out of as they say or taken out of um uh, consciousness, and this could be maybe why I would always wonder why some like worlds seem to implode or black holes or so forth and so on. And it's probably a connection with that as well. They're taken out of commission, but the Almighty gives each free will. This we learn even from Torah and the Tehillim, the Mezmura Dawit, that that the, the the sun, let the sun and the moon and the stars and everything praise Him. You know what I'm saying? Because these things, these created things, even have a certain amount of free will, not in the same proportion as we do, but they praise him. They're not automatons. You understand? They're not automatons in the sense that some people might think. But we find that even the tiniest um, quanta also has has certain free will. It's like the, it has a in a sense of consciousness, so to speak. So it says that anyone disloyal to the seal of the government and to the law upon which it is attached is looked upon as being disloyal to the government itself and we would add to that not just as looked upon but also in due time will be acted upon you understand would be acted upon as being disloyal and thereby and therefore repro reprobate you understand like a criminal as a criminal and will be brought in to trial and judgment and sentence, so forth and so on. The same is happening in the present time that we're in. You understand? When we say this is a day of judgment, you understand? We are living in judgment days. You understand? People have a wrong concept about the whole idea, but that's because of ignorance. But just as a government's ruler's seal is placed in his law to make it official, it says here that God's seal is in his law. Now, what, what, what they're going to point to next is the connection with the Sabbath or the Shabbat as being from a, 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 a scriptural perspective, looking at the, it's not explained the seven seals here, what's explained basically is seal. But what we have derived from that is now the connection with the seven seals as well and with the Metzaf Kedus of Negus and Neges or the Bible of His Imperial Majesty, which we demonstrate once again, right here, and the seven seals of the book right there, Metahafi Kedusi. You understand? Top line book and bottom line holy or holy book. Right? 
Now it says, here is here's what God says: bind up the testimony, seal the law among my disciples. In Isaiah eight and sixteen, if you turn your Bibles to Isaiah chapter eight verse sixteen, you will find it written where it says, bind up the testimony. To bind up, the sense I get to mind is is even with the uh, tefillin, to bind up. Bind up the what? Bind up the testimony, right? Bind up the testimony, seal the law among my disciples. To seal up the law among our law in the Old Testament sense is Torah. And once again, as we mentioned already, the Torah or the Orit is the first of the seven seals is it's the order you understand it's the order we can say it's Moses but it's the order it's the foundation so seal up the law among what my disciples was well, this is interesting because this is one of the few places in translation where disciples is found not in this New Testament sense but in its Old Testament sense as well as its Old Testament application where there are disciples, or some can say Talmudim, you understand, Talmudim, um, seal, up, seal up the Torah, seal up the knowledge of, of, of Torah among my disciples. Now, okay, we got Samuel here and, and the 12 prophets here. I thought we had Yeshayahu or Isaiah or Isaiah here. If we had Isaiah, we would to refer to see what Isaiah says because I mean actually the Hebrew in that Hebrew context but let's just go on for right now it says where are we sealed now it's saying that now we as Christian as faithful Hebrews where are we sealed and it says answers in the forehead we're sealed in the forehead or the frontal lobe or our consciousness you know saying we're sealed in our minds one can say his law is in our hearts, the connection between the heart and the mind. In ancient Egypt, they have a, a beautiful um, uh, a glyph that actually shows symbolically that connection between the heart and the mind. His law is in our hearts. Under the New Covenant, the Adis or the Hadis, the Hadis Kidan, his promise is this in Hebrews 10 and 16. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord, saith yod Hey, wow Hey, saith Yahweh, Baruch Hu, saith Adonai. I will put my laws, I will put my laws in their hearts. You understand? Or I think in the context is more, I will put my law, singular, in their heart, collective, singular, and in their mind will I write them according to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 16. And we just want to confirm, and we're going to confirm in, in the Adis, Adis Kidan, this particular document, which is, um, has been recently published, the New Testament in Amharic, and Amharic in English. It's a parallel Bible right here. And this is also available at the website, www.lojsociety.org. Click on the the books tab or forward slash um, books. So let's go to um, uh, Hebrews. Let's go to Hebrews chapter Hebrews chapter um, chapter ten, right? Hebrews chapter ten, verse uh, verse sixteen. Because sometimes King James. I've noticed, and it's very interesting, but it's, it's important to clear, to get a, a, a clarity, a clarity um, on that. So actually, verse 16 and, and, and uh, 15 and 16 is one verse. So quite, when I look at them, Hark, um side of the ledger, it says, Menfesa kedusim besim awul menfesa kedusa hadu amla. Menfesa kedusim degmo silazi ye mesakur linal. Kazia warat de Huala, Kanarsu agar, Yema Gabawa Kidana Yihino, Yila la Gieta, Bel Bacho, Higena Noralo, Bel Bunacho Wum, it's if it's a Fawalo. 
so we were correct in, 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 in that, that it says, not hearts like the English side of the ledger, according to King James, it reads, where of the Holy Ghost. Now, manifest is not a ghost. A mitahet or a mitahat, a mitahet is, a, is more of a, a ghost. This is not a ghost. It's the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Manifest of Kedusim, Degmo, Selezi, Ye Mesekera Linal. It says, whereof the Holy Spirit corrected also is a witness to us. For after that he had said before, this is the covenant. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days. After those days. Actually, Bamarinya says after those. It uses the word warat. Warat will be more or less be the, the month. But in the context, warat, where it says, kaziya um, warat b'chala, after that season, more correctly translated, after that particular season. And see, there are, there are um, three particular seasons within our Hebrew a holy calendar. And what you get to see at a little higher level of, of interpretation of, of the Turgum, or the Turguami, is that, the Almighty is using the tabernacle and the Hebrew, you understand, or the Jewish, the Judaic um, um, template. His son is using that, Yeshua is using that to manifest as the seven churches. The seven churches are seven different ages. So each particular church represents the, the prevailing kind of Christianity, you understand, and the main themes in that particular age of so-called Christendom. So here it's saying after a particular a season, Kaziya Warat Bahala, and the seasons can go through months, you understand, know, usually in the mundane physical, but in a spiritual concept, you understand know, these seasons might be even years or a particular dispensation of time. So it says after those days, saith the Lord or saith Adonai, saith the Gita, I will put my law, singular, in their heart singular, and in their mind or consciousness, here it says consciousness, will I write them. It says, Belabacho higin anoralo, belabunacho wim, it's a follow. It's a follow. It's a follow. It's a fawalo that I will write in their consciousness or in their heart, labuna, lib, labuna. And there's a teaching on that, but the overstanding would be metaphysically that is the consciousness. But it's linked and related to the heart, but it also implies the, the, the mental or the mind aspect. So therefore, the word consciousness perhaps will be a best English, uh, 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 the best English um, for practical use, the best English uh, word to use to overstand that. So that's, uh, we just want to go there just to verify, though we've probably been there before, but sometimes you just want to make sure. It says, he who thinks they stand, just check how you're standing. So we want to check what we had said to you all there. So the Holy Spirit places the seal of God in our foreheads when we choose it, the writer is saying here. The forehead contains the frontal lobe, or what they call the seat of consciousness. It says, this section of the brain is where our conscience, the conscience, they say, which is in Bamarinya, is the Helena. The Helena is the conscious, the conscience. Now, English, conscience means with knowing. Scientia, scientia means knowing. So, conscience in a practical application means that part of you that already has a knowing aspect to it. You understand, a knowing, you, you may know it, you may try to act like you don't, but you already knew it, in a sense. That's your conscience. When you receive, or Kabbalah, Kabbalah, when you receive the seal of God, Hashem, the true God, Ha Elohim, Baruchu, in your forehead, it means you have it in your conscience. You understand, you have it in your conscience. The writer says, you believe it. We say, you admit that this is true. You understand, when you have that in your conscience, these things you admit, even if other things tell you differently, if it's in your conscience, that's what you admit, that's what you trust, that's what you have confidence in, 
even if the facts are telling you different, you still have con you, you have trust in that which you that which you um have in your conscience. So we're now seeing how even the word Maman or Amen, objective, imnet, subjective, how faith works, the so called quote belief, we prefer admittance. The writer says you're loyal to it. You're loyal to it. Just as the government ruler places or uses his seal, quote, seal, end quote, of government to enforce the laws of the land, God uses his, quote, seal, end quote, to enforce his law. The beast will use his, his seal, which is a mark. That's the mark. He's going to use a mark to try to enforce his law in place of or instead of Ha Elohim Baruch Hu Hashem's instead of instead of his seal, so he's going to use his mark, we we'll know as the mark of the beast. Now, where would you find the seal of God with his three parts? The three parts that they mention. You understand? Know where would you find the seal of God with these three parts? Triune, Trinity of parts, tripartite, in the very center of his law. Take a close look. Now, in Exodus chapter 20, excuse me, which is, the, which is God's law, the law of God, verses 8 to 11, it reads, Remember the Shabbat, or the Senbet day, to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, all your occupational labor. But the seventh day is the Shabbat, or the Senbet, of the Lord thy God. In it, in it thou shalt not do any work, any occupational labor. So th this is what helps us to get discipline and even individually and collectively come to order. You understand? This is, this is, these are even just communal basics. That This means that you can't take the Shabbat or the Senbet if you are not about any occupational work or labor. You see what I'm saying? So it, it, it's a balance. You know, since that, so God owns or controls or rather it's to him that we give this one seventh of our of our time. So that one seventh of that time is his, but the but but the real work to be done, if we call it work, not even work, but the real act better to be done is remembrance. Remembrance is a mental thing. It's a spiritual thing. It says remember to think about, to think on. And it says for in six days Yahweh Baruch who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. And he rested on the seventh day. Wherefore, Yahweh, Baruch Hu, blessed the Shabbat, the Senbet day, and hallowed it. So he blessed it. He blessed this day, this time. And he made it holy. He made it set apart. Exodus 20, verses 8 to 11. Now, Another book that we don't have right here, let's see, is, is it? No, we don't have it right here, but you can go to the website and see it there and order it if, if, if you're up to, if you're able to. It's called um, Israel's Debt to Egypt, and that's an older work that we work to, to um, reformat, repaginate, uh, add additional illustrations to it as well. And that particular book, shows even from its demonstration that the, the, the Senbet or the Shabbat is much older than the so-called Hebrews or the Jews. So it shows that even from creation, it's not a Moses thing like Moses made something up, but he was continuing a particular righteousness, a righteous, a right relationship with the true God and the true creator, with the Father, in other words. So this is the only place in the Bible, the Met of Kedus, where you will find God's seal. This is the only place in the Bible where you'll find something that is can be considered and is the seal of God. And here are the three parts of the seal. Now, from its eschatological or biblical um, scriptural context, first of all, his name. The first part of the seal is the name, and it's the Lord, or Yahweh, yod Hey, wow Hey. He is who he is, or he will be, who he will be. You understand? This is why the 12 tribes even says greetings, the greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This day revealed in the person of Kedamawi Haile Selassie. That is the new name. You understand? As Rastafari is that new name. So first is his name. Then it's his title. 
thy God, which signifies thy creator, the one who created you, who created heaven, who created earth, who created the sea, and all, all that is, that is therein, everything that's in the heavens and the heavens of heavens, everything that's on earth and the earth of earths, and in the sea, in the depths of the sea, he created. So he is the, the, the true creator and the blameless creator. Thirdly is his territory, which we just touched on, the heaven, the earth, the sea, and all that in them is everything even if someone says oh not me well still you 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 are created thing he'll, he'll deal with you but he's being merciful so the writer says that is fantastic i prefer maybe wonderful but no wonder <laughs> satan has worked so hard to hide the truth of the sacred shabbat the sacred sabbath from us why because it's god's sign it, 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 it it's a sign it's a, it's it's a it's a relationship. You know what I'm saying? It's, there's a relationship. You may ask, is the Sabbath really the seal of God? Because some people say, well, it, can, can, can you really say the Sabbath is the seal of God? Well, look at Ezekiel 20 and 12. Ezekiel 20 and 12 says, moreover, also, I gave them my Sabbaths. I gave them my Sabbaths to be a sign between me and them that they might know that I am Yahweh, he who is who he is, he is who he is, that sanctify them. Then there's another quote here which says, and hollow or make holy, make set apart, make special and distinctive my Sabbaths, and they shall be a sign between me and you that ye, you all, may know that I am the Lord thy God, or Yahweh, Elo, Eloheka. You understand? The Lord thy God, Ezekiel 20 and 20. Now, the word sign means the same within the context as, as seal, within this context that we're presenting. And you can see Romans um, 4, 11. What could be clearer? See, now, a point we want to note on Sabbath. Because some think that there's, there's, there's only the, the seventh day, you know, Saturday Sabbath or Friday at, at, at even to Saturday at even Sabbath. But there's also the annual Sabbath. Now, now what are the annual Sabbaths, some might say? Well, well, didn't your preacher or pastor tell you about the annual Sabbath? But told you about Christmas and Easter Bunny and Santa Claus, but not about the annual Sabbath. See, is no wonder Satan uh, want to hide and suppress this from us. You understand? And the annual Sabbaths are those holy days like um, like Rosh Hashanah, like Passover, like 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 harvest, like like um 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 the seven the seven of them in in our holy Hebrew calendar. You understand? And we find that even Yehoshua, our Lord and Savior also has kept those, and we can keep those in Christ. See, this is what the Gentile Christians took them a while. Some of them are beginning to learn the importance of the feast of Yahweh or the Moedim of Elohim from Old Testament because the New Testament apostle says that the, the, the law was fulfilled, was perfected or completed in Yehoshua HaMoshiach. That, that he is the outworking of that law. Therefore, when the so-called Jews or the religious authorities rejected that, that showed how much they were hypocrites. It's like when we say those who rejected his majesty claiming to be Christian, you understand? both at the time and even now, how much they are hypocrites because he fulfills that which is already written, but they want to deny it because they have made up their own evil imagination. They prefer Santa Claus, Easter egg, and bunny, and a whole bunch of other nonsensical things. So this is why we wanted to get to this book right here from before to kind of begin off um, when we're speaking about seal. You understand? To put seal in your mind in that context, the first seal, you understand? Or the first, that first sign, you understand? Is that Shabbat sign, that Senbet sign, and Accept it or not, the, the, the Sabbath, the sabbatical discipline, when we approach it from the right heart and mind, 
is a great blessing and benefit both in this world and the world to come as well as helping ones to better order to, to better order their life but don't do it as as the foolish Jews you understand did it and had some of them even do it out aside and apart from Christos Yehoshua the the Moshia you understand because the Moshia has lifted up you understand the true interpretation and understanding and fulfillment of it you understand and, and that is so very key to to look at the old testament and study the old testament but but through the testimony of Yehoshua through the testimony of Adonai through the testimony of our black lord and savior Jesus Christ now not to not to forget this part right here let's just try to get this all in one context here if we can seal from Webster's where we were before of Webster's now we had went to the etymological open etymological bracket me middle English seal s e e l derived from which is the lower hand you understand derived from old French you understand derived from l Latin um, and it means sigillum sigillum like a sigil they say sigil today but really it was sigillum and the sigillum is a seal a mark is diminutive of um, signum so sigillum and then you have signum signum and then it says see sign see sign so that's where the etymological connection in the national what Sunday law was actually you know made that a seal is actually a sign now that is closed etymological bracket that's the etymology of it so the real root etymology of of a seal relates to a, a sigil or a sigil the sigillum a signum and actually refers to a sign and then we then it says the gold sea sign now they have a lot of outside of the etymological bracket there's a lot of um connotative meaning that's the one two three four five so forth and so on entries that a word might have that's what you call the connotative meaning the etymological meaning or root is in the bracket those two those two brackets that's the etymological bracket right here that's when you get into the roots because etym the word etym mean true and logos mean word or true logic that's the true logic so get off all that illogical stuff some of the connotative meanings are illogical but just demonstrate how foolish people can be and what they can believe foolishly that's apart from the actual meaning or context of the word in truth now we're going to go to the reference when you see in the Webster says C sign and it has a word in, in bold or caps it's good to go to that word as well so, so you now you're now studying etymologically and going to the true roots where words are derived from so one can put a lot of these original things that were written and when it was written it was written or translated by people who understood these things about words you see nowadays they say bad is good good is bad up is down and this is that and that is this and that's just confusion that's why this is it's Babylon but now sign here is a noun open etymological bracket me it says signa or s i g n e derived from o f r capital o capital f small r old french derived from capital l which is the latin and it says signa it says signa is a mark is a token you understand probably it's the base of um sakare or sakare scare sakare which means to cut and then they say go see saw original sense probably was an incised mark and it was an incised mark in other words a hieroglyph see an incised mark is a hieroglyph when you incise this mark you know what christ said learn ye the parable of the sower you know he said learn the parable of the sower yes he did say learn all the parables but he had made a point about the the, the parable of the fig tree he was saying to inscribe this inscribe this in your mind this, this, this verbal hieroglyphic so a seal is also something that's an, an incised mark like 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 carved a carved in mark you know incising something you know that's where you get to the root of hieroglyphic so forth and so on so this is interesting because the seal refers to the sign and the sign refers to an 
an incised mark. And the incised mark actually would be an hieroglyph from its very root. Now, what is interesting, Bamarinya in the Amharic, the word for seal, the word atame, you understand, or in the older, the hatame, hatame in the older, but the Amharic atame, or the good is hatame, hatame, and the Amharic atame means to, to print or to, or to stamp. It means to incise, but in its modern usage, it means to print. And this is where we now come forward to both um, reveal that this right here, if you look at this right here, this is incised. This is printed in. This is stamped in. This is printed in, stamped in. And as we already mentioned, that His Imperial Majesty is he who brought the first printing presses to Ethiopia. And it was not... It was barely, I think, 50 years after the printing press was even discovered and really used in Europe. It, it, it was barely 50 years, you understand, after that per particular period of, of, of time. So it wasn't like a long time. That, so when Europe discovered this new discovery, His Majesty, upon seeing this new discovery, brought the first printing presses from his own, from his, out of his own pocket for the good of I and I all. You know what I'm saying? But in doing that, he was fulfilling the biblical prophecy of Revelation chapter 5, verse 5. So when we put together what the meaning of seal, what does seal really mean? It's important for us to understand that seal means uh, a sigil, which could be a logo. But this logo and this sign is referring to something that's inscribed in, incised in, like in the groove, just like the hieroglyphs. That's why the hieroglyph is the best link of that. But then in printing, when you understand how the printers print and how in, these are incised marks that make the letters that basically what the first printing press, the Gutenberg, the Gutenberg printing press, basically utilize a bunch of incised marks with ink and so forth and so on to make the first um, movable type, as they call it, printing press. Because before that time, each of these books had to be written by hand. That means a learned scribe had to spend the time, had the materials, merchandise, and, and so forth and so on, to write each of these books and to copy, to copy, to copy, to copy from, from, from older manuscripts to new ones. So you can understand that everyone did not have a copy of the scriptures or the Bible. But then this also clarifies what Revelation chapter 5, verse 5 is saying in the context of the time. Because first it says to look upon it. First, no, look upon it. But then it said to read it, the ability to read it. And this will take us to the, the next portion of this particular study that we would like to um, continue on. But we wanted to get through the word seal on this a little bit more, but we just dealt with the etymological here. If we want to get into the connotation, it's kind of fun, interesting to see how something means this in its root, but then how people believe something well, way different than that. But then it does explain that, like, um, what the Bible says, people don't know, you know, forgive them, Father, they don't know what they are doing. So the next portion of this, we want to talk about reading the book. You understand? Know reading. And one of the main... Um, points and purposes of the work of Rastafari, because this is when he was Rastafari uh, Mekonen, you know saying, or some say Rastafari Makonen, was to increase Amharic literacy and to increase the literacy of his people, because he himself says and has done, according to what he has said, that education is the key. Education is the key. So this bringing in of the first printing presses into Ethiopia eventually would be fulfilled in what we regard as one of the greatest works, and that is this Metzhaf Kedus, this book of the seven seals, the Ethiopian Emperor's Bible, Haile Selassie's Bible, otherwise known as the Metzhaf Kedus, otherwise known as the Metzhaf Kedus. So we're going to pause for the course and want to continue with. Uh, 
a prophecy about the book and the book being read and um and it's contained in the book of Isaiah. Please stay tuned for that as we go through this particular series here on the book of the seven seals. So, Shalom Rastafari.